Good afternoon, Mr. Zikri, lecturer for business and economy, landscape analysis, and good day to everyone. My name is Danny, and I'm here to represent my mid exam that is Indonesia Open Paper Industry Analysis in 2021. So here is the overview of Indonesia Open Paper Industry in 2021. So Indonesia is currently in the top 10 paper producers in the world. It's actually uh, ranked third with a production capacity average of 11 million tons annually. As you can see from the data that is provided in the slide, open paper industry contributed 0.67% uh, to the national GDP with $13.06 billion and open up employment for 260,000 direct laborers like the mill and factory workers and 1.1 million indirect laborers uh, like the office workers. Indonesia also exports a lot of pulp and paper products to neighboring countries and it is recorded in 2021 amounting to $7.5 billion with pulp and paper based products. The things that drive the pulp and paper industry to grow are market growth and development because they trigger the use of paper based packaging in their products and also the use of paper for a business transaction documentation. And environment friendly issues like the changing of plastic bag bags usage to paper bags in convenience stores. Uh, there are several challenges in this industry, mainly trade challenges that come from large export tariffs to enter Chinese markets, which is uh, one of the export destination of uh, paper and pulp in Indonesia and environment friendly challenges. So it can be seen that the environment environment friendly issues is a double edged sword for pulp and paper industry because the industry can cause some deforestation and therefore may have caused environmental damages. Now here are the trends and projections of pulp and paper industry until 2021. It actually shows a decrease in growth in 2020 and 2021. The decrease was caused by coronavirus outbreaks that happened in late 2019 and entered Indonesia on early 2020. The pandemic caused a decrease in the global economy and market. Although the production and operation of pulp and paper industry is not significantly impacted, big regulations due to pandemic like border closing and quarantine regulations that was implemented by governments and other countries made the pulp and paper industry growth decrease too. But it will be projected in 2020, uh, in 2022 and the following years, after the economy recovered from the pandemic, the pulp and paper industry will be growing fastly too, as the market demand for paper is projected to rise with the new emerging businesses. And with the quarantine regulations revoked, it also makes things easier to do business. Market structure for Indonesia pulp and paper industry is oligopoly with high concentration. It was seen with the market dominated by few big companies and the products are homogeneous. And it is also uh, oligopoly with cartel model where several big companies acted as one. With 62, 62 paper companies in Indonesia, the market share is dominated by big companies such as PT Indah Kiat Pulp and Paper, PT Chiwikimia, PT Suparma, and PT Toba Pulp Pustari. The two biggest of them came from the same group, which is uh, Sinarmas Group. So the pricing in the market is set by these big companies, while the products are not too different, such as pulp, paper, and paper-based products like PPC paper, paper craft, uh, wrappings, carton box, duplex board, and tissues. Now, to back up my analysis, we can analyze the market shares using Herfindahl and Hirschman index, where we can calculate it, the square roots of market shares of each top companies. And uh, after the calculation, it can be seen that the Herfindahl Hirschman index is more than 2,500, which means uh, that the market is highly concentrated. Now, usually the cartel model oligopoly is described with king curve, where if the big companies raise its price, the demand will decrease, but other companies will not follow the price to gain more profits. 
On the other hand, if the big companies lower their prices, the demand will stay the same, but other companies will follow the price to match it. Now, since COVID-19 outbreak, the global and local economy took a hit. While the demand for paper is unchanged significantly, the regulations from government is uh, to quarantine and area lockdown made business halted, especially logistics such as uh, the difficulties to export to other countries. So it can be said that pulp and paper industry is highly dependent on other sectors of economy. Now, I take PT Indahkiat Pulp and Paper or INKP as my object of analysis. The cost structures of INKP can be identified from the financial reports in the statement of profit and loss. We can see that the variable cost takes over 50% of the total cost. Uh, and we can see that the INKP's total cost is increasing while the fixed cost is decreasing. So it can be said that INKP cut their cost that is not closely related to production. Now, as we can see again from the increase in, in inventory and sales, it matches the increase in variable costs in the previous slide. So NKP still operated well enough to produce more products in 2021 and even gaining net income of $527 million. The reason for this is NKP operated closely to its related parties. So even if the market took a hit, NKP still has its own circle of secured customers. For a government regulation that affected pulp and paper industry, Ministry of Industry ratified Peraturan Menteri No. 49 Tahun 2020 about green industry standards for paper and carton industry that consists of new standards for paper production regarding the energy usage and decreasing of the CO2 emissions. This affected the production process of pulp and paper and additional bureaucracy that's needed to be done, thus increasing the production costs. For pulp and paper industry opportunities, the chairman of APKI, which is Indonesian Pulp and Paper Association, said that technology called advancement like automation and digitalization can bring about the competitive force of pulp and paper industry in the future to make it easier in the production process. While the environmental issues that was brought by NGOs, high tariff trade barriers, and international issues like COVID-19 pandemic, and also the Russia-Ukraine conflict that affected the logistics can be challenges to this industry. With the global pandemic in 2020 and 2021 made the decrease in growth for pulp and paper industry, hopefully the pandemic will cease and the economy will recover. And following that, pulp and paper industry will continue to thrive with the increase in demand for paper and paper-based packaging with the new uh, with the emerging new entrants in the market. Hopefully the trade ban and, and restrictions also lifted by other countries so that exports and imports can be done again. Governor sustainable regulations about replacement of plastic bags with paper bags will also contribute to the increase in growth of pulp and paper industries. Now here are some conclusions for my analysis. Pulp and paper industry in Indonesia is oligopoly with cartel model, where several leading companies acted as one big company. The price and demand for paper and paper-based products rarely change significantly. Pulp and paper industry is highly dependent on other uh, economy sectors. Big paper companies or the cartel do not affect it significantly by the COVID-19 pandemic because they already have a circle of secured customers from their related parties. Issues like green industry, high trade tariffs, and international issues that affected logistics may be a challenge for this industry. Pulp and paper industry is projected to recover and continues to grow fastly in the future with the recovery of the market. Now, here are some citations for my sources of data that I use in my analysis. And I think that's all for my analysis of Indonesia pulp and pepper industry in 2021. Thank you for your time.